uh, for us. And I uh, wanted to start by introducing myself again. Uh, my name is Caleb, Caleb Reyes. Uh, I'm a first year grad student at Cal Poly Pomona. And uh, I'm in a couple different classes right now, but one of them is trying to establish uh, practicing professional competencies and learning how to really become professional in a workplace and seek a career that fits us. And I wanted to sit down with you today to kind of improve my knowledge about the specific uh, demands of my desired career path, your career, and um, kind of like what you experience on a day-to-day -day basis and uh, what your career journey was like. Um, so yeah, I have a list of questions that we can uh, kind of run through, but it's just a dialogue between us both. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions for me, feel free. And I'm just gonna start off by asking, uh, why did you wanna work in rehab and performance in the first place? Yeah, before I answer that question, I'm actually interested in your career path. Uh, I'm not too familiar with it. Do you mind giving me details about what you're trying to do? Yeah, of course. So I'm a baseball player still um, here at Pomona, and I still want to work within that realm of sports and uh, particularly, particularly baseball. So I'm interested in rehab, uh, injury rehabilitation uh, and human performance not quite sure what I want to go into yet after my master's program, but um, I would love to stick within injury rehab and, and sports performance, human performance. That's great, man. I can definitely relate. I'm a former baseball player. I played mm -hmm. baseball all four years of high school, and then I played a little bit on the club team at UCLA. Um, and going back to your question about, you know, why did I get into rehab and performance? I knew I wanted to um, have a career that involves, you know, biomechanics, uh, the nervous system, musculoskeletal systems, but I, I, I didn't, I didn't want to go into, you know, be, becoming a doctor and prescribing medications all day. Okay. I, I tried to pursue that path, but then I realized, Hey, I'm just chasing a salary, not a true passion. So I called an audible and I switched to physical therapy, like my senior year of college. Okay. and decided to apply not even knowing really what the profession is like I had done physical therapy before but I didn't really understand what it was like I, I just thought you know you're just going to be helping people and you're not going to be sitting at a desk all day and I didn't realize what the profession is until I like two or three years in actually mm -hmm. um, and I think with any industry you don't truly understand what you're getting yourself into until you're actually in it oh yeah of course it's um, definitely a battle. So like going off of that, um, you said you really didn't know what it was like, what being a PT was like a couple of years into your career. Um, so your first job out of, out of grad school, was it not what you expected? Yeah, so I had a pretty good like general idea. I was in the outpatient orthopedic setting, but I didn't really understand like the ins and outs of billing, um, you know, fraudulent healthcare practitioners, things of that nature. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a money hungry world and I get it where we live in a capitalist society. And, uh, I, I didn't realize that more people were, you know, just trying to make some money than trying to actually help people. Um, and when you're in grad school, you're kind of stuck in a bubble. Like you, you don't really need to worry too much about, you know, finances and, things like that. So when I, th I think even aside from physical therapy, when you go out in the real world, is it entirely different beast? No, yeah, of course. Um, I can definitely attest to that. Um, I feel like I am in my own little bubble here in the master's program. And sometimes you don't feel like you're prepared enough. Um, so going off that, do you think that there was anything that you could have taken advantage of in grad school to prepare you for those real world uh, experiences? I don't think so. Okay. You know, I, I was a, I was a tutor in grad school. Um, and I'll, I mean, I've, I had jobs before, but I obviously I didn't have a career. So when, once you start, you know, paying for rent and um, trying to save money, trying to build a business, it, it's uh, completely different than trying to study for an exam and, you know, getting A's. Of course, of course. Um, was there, you did uh, 
have jobs during college and everything. Did you ever do like internships for PT, uh, like starting your senior year or even after that? So with physical therapy, a certain amount of hours are required depending on what school you apply to, which I'm sure you know. Yes. And uh, I did some hours for UCLA's rehab team. And um, I, don't, I can't even remember what else did I do. I, I believe I, I volunteered at Sansom Clinic in Santa Barbara. I'm from Santa Barbara. So uh, yeah, I volunteered there, but I, I don't think I was ever like a PT aide or anything like that. I, I just did uh, volunteer hours. But there was a lot of overlap between pre-med and pre-PT. So I didn't really need to like redo my requisites. Okay. Yeah. And I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, how old are you, by the way? Oh, I just turned 22 last week. Get out of here. Yeah, I, I was, I'm uh, young. I was looking at your Instagram photo and you look a lot older. Like you look like late 20s. Uh, no, it's probably just the facial hair and the long hair <laughs> at that time. <laughs> Yeah, I just turned 22. I'm, I'm pretty young for, uh, I guess, where I'm at in school. Uh, just kind of kept going through elementary and like uh, pre-K and kindergarten. They just yeah. took me through and always stayed young, never got held back or anything. What, uh, what positions do you play? I'm a pitcher. I just became a pitcher, though. Uh, I caught my first two years in college. Good choice, man. I was a pitcher and third baseman. Okay, sweet, sweet. Yeah. Have you heard of Peak Performance Project? I have not, no. Um, I'm not, again, I'm not exactly too sure if this aligns with your career path, but you should check them out. Um, it, they're called P3 Sports Science on Instagram. Um, it's, it's like this facility for professional athletes run by MD. And I actually participated in P3 in Santa Barbara when I was playing baseball, and it really enhanced my uh, baseball skills. And I, I think it, it would just generally interest you. Okay, I'll check that out. Check that out. Um, yeah, going back to like present day, your career, uh, you have your own, your own practice. You have your own business, right? Um, like what motivated you to establish your own place? Yeah, so um, my first year out of grad school, I was working for an outpatient clinic and we would see two patients per hour. And... Although that's not anything crazy, like I know clinics that do four patients per hour, even two patients per hour, I felt like I was shortchanging the patients. Okay. In addition to not learning as a therapist, not getting the proper mentorship. And after a year, I called it quits and I started working for an employer that sees one patient per hour. And I get it. You need to see multiple patients in insurance based business to make money. Like it's fee for service, not fee for results. So the more services you provide, the more money you make. And I mean, it's kind of like an inverse relationship. The more patients you see, the, the decreased quality of care. And I, I wanted to step out of insurance-based practices altogether and just do cash-based such that I could um, focus on quality of care and really give the patients um, what they desire, whether that's to get out of pain or enhance their quality of life. And I, I'm currently still in um, an in insurance-based clinic part-time, and then I'm pursuing this cash-based business on the side. So I don't ac actually have a brick and mortar. I pay, uh, it's called Movement Society. It's this facility. I pay them on a per client basis. So it's pretty much like a riskless option for me. I don't have to pay for so much overhead and sign a lease and be underwater while I'm trying to obtain clients. It's like if I obtain a client, then I, I pay the gym um, like 35 bucks, basically. Mm -hmm. Sweet, sweet deal. It sounds like you've got like a good direction that you want to go in, which is uh, very nice to hear, especially since, uh, like you said, you switched kind of uh, your career paths your senior year um, and kind of found your own focusing on quality of care, not like the money grab and, and not chasing the salary. That's great. Um, let's see, what other questions do I have for you? So yeah, I imagine you have really long days of work, always on your feet, running around helping patients. Um, 
when you get home after a long day of work, like what motivates you to get up that next day and, and do the same thing and, and see more people and help more people? That's a great question. Uh, you know, sometimes it's tough, um, you know, playing this long game. You, you got to treat it like a marathon, not a sprint. And uh, if you're doing something that doesn't fulfill you, I don't think uh, you're going to last. It's not sustainable. Um, and I, I realized I was going down that path. That's why I started, um, or I opened up an LLC. And it's funny because when I see clients through my personal LLC, it, it really feels like I'm doing something for myself and not someone else. I think my life goal is to just be my own employer. And that, that doesn't really feel like work to me or like a chore. Um, it, it excites me to know that it's like a win-win, like I'm helping people as well as, you know, working for myself. And uh, it, it's just a good feeling to have in the back of your head, knowing that, hey, you, you're not going to be a slave the rest of your life. You, I mean, you're creating like a brand and you have a vision and that that really keeps me going. Perfect. And your vision, do you do you see yourself working primarily with like athletes? Or like what level of athletes do you just want to um, to work with everyday people like uh, another gr great question man uh so my business is called hyena rehab and performance and so far i've only dabbled with the rehab side but i have experience at peak performance projects um where they work with professional athletes and at the time they were seeing high school and collegiate and i was lucky enough to you know work alongside those professional athletes um now i believe it's strictly professional i could be wrong I, I would like to train uh, high school and collegiate athletes. And uh, I, I'm not a personal trainer. However, I, I have experience in powerlifting. I've done multiple powerlifting competitions that lifted 600 pounds, squatted 500. And um, P3 really taught me how to incorporate lifting and you know explosive movements uh, into the respective sport. And with those two sets of experiences uh, and my doctorate in physical therapy, I, th I think I'm pretty adept at, you know, getting someone to the next level. Sweet. Very nice. What experience do you have like uh, performance wise? Um, kind of looking into more biomechanics. I used to work with a, a hitting coach. Uh, his name's uh, Doug Latta. He, uh, professional hitting consultant he calls himself he works with a bunch nice. of uh, major leaguers and a uh, bunch of professional players and he kind of opened my eyes to the whole just like biomechanics field that area of interest because yeah. at the time when I went into college I was thinking okay I'm going to be an econ major uh, that's what I was interested in at the time but once I started seeing him and actually looking at like okay performance um putting the body in positions to optimize your, your, your power output and all of that. It was just very, very interesting. So then I switched my path to studying kinesiology in college. Um, so that's like where it stemmed from. And then I, I frequent the weight room. I'm always lifting like it's, it's therapeutic. You know, I really enjoy learning about new lifts, what they mean for me as a baseball player, what they mean for me as a pitcher. Um, and just, I'm interested in enhancing that performance, always getting better and always seeking new methods, new fun ways to incorporate certain movements into my lifts. And that's, that is my side of performance. I feel like I haven't had a ton of experience in, in working with people, but I kind of go at it solo for now and trying to like ask buddies like, Hey, where, why are you doing that lift? Um, where'd you see that? And then I kind of dive in and, and see what I can do with it. Honestly, I, I think that experience that you just described is so underrated. Like you're, although you're not working with someone else, you're working with yourself and seeing what works for you and uh, just problem solving on a daily basis will really help you like in the future when you are helping someone else, like I, 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 this might be a little controversial, but like, I don't trust other therapists who have never lifted in their life, like who have never touched a weight. 
not I, w- I wouldn't say I don't trust them, but I, uh, I know if I didn't have that experience, I would not understand how to do certain things in the rehab world. <laughs> no, 100%. Like it yeah. goes hand in hand with like coaching. Like I don't trust coaches who've never like actually pitched before. Like my yeah. personal pitching coach right now, he was drafted and he pitched professionally. He never made it to the major leagues, but he was in the minor leagues for a number of years. And I will only listen to him about pitching advice because he's actually done it. He's actually had success. For sure. I 100% agree with you um, on that front. Yeah, and and it's not like rehab, you're like lifting, you know, 300, 400 pounds or anything. But I I think that principles of lifting can be, you know, incorporated somewhat at a lower level in rehab, like progressions and things like that. And going off, you talked about like the experience of other therapists and how um, actually like doing the exercises and stuff enhances like your knowledge of how to treat patients in a way. What do you think are some of the most important like skills and qualities to find success as a PT? I think uh, you have to have pretty good nuts and bolts, like know your anatomy, know your neurology. And, uh, but if you have just that, it's hard to be successful. I think you have to have that as a foundation. And then you have to have the desire to, you know, gain clinical experience and treat every day as an opportunity to grow. And, um, when I first started out, I just kind of thought I knew everything. I actually worked for a physical therapy assistant, but he had a lot more experience than me. So it was a weird hierarchy. Um, I thought I knew everything because I had this doctorate, but I didn't have any experience. Like I had the experience in my clinical rotations, but I I didn't have like true salaried experience. And um, once I found, uh, I'm sorry, what was your question again? (laughs) It was just like kind of the most important skills and qualities. Yeah, I think, uh, so at first I would just treat the site of injury and not really look at the entire kinetic chain. And once I started looking at the entire picture, I really started to notice patients get better. Um, For example, if someone has neck pain, uh, the typical approach would be, you know, just loosen up upper upper traps, sternocleidomastoid, things like that, and not really look at the spine, the hips, the knees, the ankles, all the way down, you know, to the foot, um, just because the foot is your base and it articulates with the floor in standing whereas when you know when you're sitting it's the pelvis and I, th- I really think you have to uh look at the entire body and treat the entire body whether that, whether that's normalizing range of motion or normalizing strength and uh taking into account someone's prior injuries because sometimes you know someone could have broken their leg and not rehab that correctly and now they have a mobility a mobility deficit at like the knee or the hip and that could be influencing how their their spine moves and all the way up to your head so i think it's about looking at the big picture big picture just being able to separate that and kind of just take a step back and kind of go backwards and say okay what's causing that like, yeah at the same pain. right at the same time i think uh you need to look at the micro because sometimes um, one little thing can be influencing like a the big toe, for example, if you can't extend your big toe that that can, I've seen those lead to meniscus tears. Um, the big toe has such a, although it's small, it could have such a big impact on the rest of the body. Okay. Very nice. Very interesting. I didn't know quite the impact the big toe had on like the knee and everything that's yeah for sure i'll have to look into that that sounds pretty interesting okay uh shifting focus a little bit uh just very quickly what does your everyday like routine look like as you're going into work like your typical work day what does that look like yeah so i have a little dog uh she's a jindo corgi and she's really active so i I get up at six i um drink a tall glass of water give her some water we go for a mile run and then I come back shower um day trade and then I go to work uh I work about three days in the 
uh, clinic for my employer. And then the rest of the days I use for hyena rehab and I, I work out in the arts district. Um, I'm also talking to another facility called F45, which I'm sure you, you've heard of. It's, uh, I don't know if it's- Sounds a bit familiar, yes. Yeah, it's all, all over the place. Um, I'm going to do a little workshop for them in a couple of weeks. And then, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm talking to massage therapists and trying to get this business off the ground. So when I'm not working, I'm working. <laughs> you're not working. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. It's, I find myself doing that too. Like I'll be on the, out on the field or in the weight room and then I'll just think of an assignment and like, think of like, okay, how can I take this research project? Like what direction can I go in? Yeah. Like, yeah. You're always working when you're not working. The brain never stops. I, I don't know you too well, but just based on, you know, your age and what you've been saying to me, I, I could tell you have a bright future, man. So thank you. Appreciate that. We're, we're getting there. Um, so like what advice would you have for me? Like, um, like you said, I'm, I'm still young at my place where I'm at. What advice would you give me uh, moving forward? Stay curious, stay hungry. Um, if you think you know everything, you probably don't. If you understand you don't know anything, you probably know something. Um, yeah, stay hungry and also take everything with a grain of salt and know who you're getting your advice from. Perfect. Thank you. Um, well, yeah, that's all the questions that I have for you. Uh, I, I really want to thank you for taking this uh, half hour to sit down with me, uh, help me broaden my knowledge and, and really understand uh, what goes into uh, your career and like what you do on a daily basis, how you think, uh, what, what, what qualities make you successful and, and everything like that. So uh, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, man. Uh, I, let, let me ask you, um, I go for it. is there anything else that interests you? Um, do, like, do you have any passions like side hustles or anything like that? Um, side hustles. Let's see. Uh, not really. I think of myself as kind of pretty vanilla, honestly. Like it's, <laughs> it's baseball and school right now. Um, yeah. Of course, the the main goal, the dream, is uh, to hopefully get drafted uh, after next year, and nice. uh, and keep playing professionally. But sometimes you just got to be realistic. You got to go by the numbers and say like, there's not an incredible chance of that happening. So. The question really for me comes down to, do I want to keep going to school after I graduate with a master's degree? And uh, if I do, then I would really like to pursue PT um, yeah. and keep going down that route. But if I don't, then I guess I'd, I'd figure it out. Uh, becoming a firefighter and going into the fire department is something uh, that does interest me because I do like helping people. I do want that pension yeah <laughs> do all the benefits are good um but yeah it's it's really finding like myself within these next two years and, and trying to figure out okay what do i want to do what do i want to be what do i want what differences do i want to make so that's the question that's really cool man my stepdad's a firefighter and um He's about to retire in a couple of years, He's like early fifties. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I think it's a great career path. You, you get to stay active and, um, it, it's just, I'm sure it's really fulfilling. Yeah. I just, I really find, um, like the, this warm feeling for just being able to help people or provide some sort of service or information or knowledge that I can give them to just like benefit them in any way. Like I find myself, I'll be in the weight room uh, with some of our freshman baseball players and I'll be looking at the way they're lifting and I'm like, that's not quite it. So like I'll yeah. jump in and like provide my own knowledge and, and try to help them do that. And that's very fulfilling, even though it's just on a smaller scale. Um, so like, that's what kind of keeps motivating me to pursue uh, biomechanics and uh and strength and performance and, and honestly like rehab i see some of our injured players and i'm like i want you back on this field like how are we going to do this and yeah uh, 
yeah, it's just, it's an interesting, interesting time right now, bouncing between different interests. That's really dope, man. I mean, the, the world is your playground. Uh, have you heard of Jeff McNeil on the Mets? Oh, I love Jeff McNeil. Yeah. So um, we actually played baseball together um, when we were younger and okay. I thought he was really good, but I, I didn't think he was like professional caliber. And not o- only is he a professional baseball player now, but he won the batting title. Yeah. He was batting like 326. Yeah. And uh, I mean, that just kind of showed me that anything is possible. And um, I don't know anything about your baseball skills or anything, but keep grinding. And I'm, I'm sure, um, you know, I, I think work, work ethic trumps all. Oh, I couldn't agree with, with you more. Uh, definitely, I like to think that I have a good head on my shoulders and that I, I put my nose to the grindstone and, and really get after what I want. And uh, that's what it's about. And I feel like at the end of the day, if you don't get everything you want, if you keep having that work ethic and uh, that growth mindset, I think, I think you're just, you're going to be just all right. You're going to be just fine. For sure, man. Well, I just want to say thanks again. And uh, if you can email me the video, I'd really appreciate it. Of course, I'd be happy to. Thank you. Thanks for sitting up with me. And if you ever have any questions or you just want to talk about anything, feel free to just DM me on Instagram. Of course, I'll take advantage of that. Thank you so much. All right, man. Have a good rest of the day. You too.